Hello, good afternoon and welcome to the Graduate Mentor Workshop, the fourth in our series. Uh, and today we will spend 30 minutes uh, with our guest speaker discovering more about a very clever interview technique um, in our ABT workshop. Lovely to have uh, so many uh, mentees along uh, today for our uh, workshop. We will be recording this, so if you need to duck out or you want to uh, view it back on demand, then it will be available um, to, to watch back. I'll upload this uh, to the platform uh, later on today. So um, if everyone could just make sure that their audio and video is turned off, so as not to disrupt um, the workshop and our speakers. Uh, we'll crack on. So for those who don't know me, my name's Dan Hawes and I created Graduate Mentor back in August 2020. So if you've used the platform already, you'll know that it's a free one to one mentoring platform with a mission to help the next generation of graduates reach their career potential with expert support from inspiring mentors. I'm also the co-founder of Graduate Recruitment Bureau or GRB. We're a recruitment consultancy for high caliber university students, recent graduates, alumni and recruiters. We have about 50 staff. Uh, we're based in Brighton and we have 2000 clients, companies you will definitely have heard of like Amazon, IBM, Unilever and Ocado. And we've placed over 8000 graduates with full time graduate and executive level jobs. So, um, We've been going for, for over a year now, and there were several milestones over a relatively short uh, period of time that Graduate Mentor has achieved. I'd just like to share some of these uh, facts and figures with you. So we have over a thousand students and graduates who registered for the free service, which is brilliant. And we've also had over 240 mentors uh, jump on the platform. Now, we thought that would be quite challenging. These are busy uh, business professionals who've all kindly volunteered, but we have some brilliant mentors, um, including Jess, who'll be speaking shortly, who kindly supported the program from a range of different organizations, some as high profile as Facebook, Google, Coca-Cola, the Army, and the University of Nottingham. So there's a brilliant uh, selection of mentors who are on the platform. We've actually successfully completed a 577 mentoring sessions, uh, a number of success stories from mentees finding work or uh, improving their interview technique or producing a far better CV. Um, and they're all on our uh, platform for you to read about. So, so far, we've had about 13 uh, lovely success stories. Our social media following is increasing day by day. Um, in the first year, we have uh, 361 Instagram followers, 193 LinkedIn followers, 163 on Twitter, and 125 uh, following us and liking us uh, on Facebook. And we've also run a series of webinars. Um, a lot of them have been with universities, very, very keen to uh, spread the word with their students, such as University of Middlesex, uh, University of Bedfordshire, University of Bangor. But also we've been running a series of workshops uh, to give you, the student, uh, a much better uh, chance in the job market. So this is our fourth uh, workshop today, and it wouldn't happen um, without our lovely partners. Now, uh, Graduate Recruitment Bureau obviously are, are financially backing um, Graduate Mentor in a big way, but also we have uh, three other partners who joined us in our mission. So I'm delighted uh, that they're supporting us. Uh, the company who is our silver partner is a, an organization called SureServe Group and our two bronze partners, um, an IT firm called Software and a marketing consultancy uh, called Oakwood. So we're delighted to have uh, this financial support uh, that means that we can sustain this program for future generations. So a huge thank you uh, to our partners. Now, over to our presenter, Jess Flack. Uh, she's worked as both a graduate recruiter and a lecturer in employability, skills and professional development, and advocates the use of storytelling in personal pitch and interviews. In this session, she'll introduce you to the ABT method of storytelling, closing the story loop, and some powerful speakers who've mastered the art of storytelling. 
She'll give you advice, techniques that can boost your storytelling at interview, empowering you to be your best self, enabling you to be a memorable candidate for all the right reasons. I'm very interested in uh, what Jess has to say, and I hope you are too. There will be the opportunity at the very end to ask questions. Uh, but right now, I'm going to hand over to Jess. Thanks very much, Dan. So if technology works, it's magic. We should be able to start my slides. It's been a bit sticky this week for me, technology, so we'll see how this goes. So thank you again very much for allowing me to come on and talk to you guys about storytelling and interview and how to use the ABT method. As Dan mentioned, I'm Jess Black and I'm going to give you a little bit of information about who I am first. So um, it helps you to realise that you're in a safe pair of hands. So I'm currently working as a commissioner for skills development um, at Essex County Council which is where I spot gaps in employment provision for 16 to 24 year, old, 24 year olds who are Gen Z and commission projects or join up the dots to close current projects in terms of the gaps that we have there. I've also been a graduate recruiter for KPMG, Cisco and lots of other uh, large corporates and a project manager for a company called Hobson's, who is now GTI, where I interviewed graduates out in China. I've worked in higher education for over 15 years, teaching in employability, work-based learning and professional development. And I'm also a fellow of the Higher Education Academy. One of the things I absolutely love to do, as well as coming on and, and talking about storytelling, is connecting and networking. So I've popped my LinkedIn profile there um, and we can share these slides later on. If you'd love to connect with me, I'd love to connect with you. Let's have a look at storytelling. So one of the best things about stories is that they are everywhere. You'll hear them and see them all over the place. You just need to have your eyes and ears open. They're used in teaching, marketing, pitches, and of course, interviews. And one of the best bits of storytelling I've seen recently, especially on LinkedIn, as I don't go up to London as much as I should, is about Thursday, which is a new dating app um, and they are only open on a Thursday. Um, and the story goes that George Rawlings, who set up this fantastic new app, was so fed up of going along to weddings and family gatherings where people would say, oh, why haven't you brought anyone along with you, George? That he dreamt of being able to one day go to the next wedding and say, OK, somebody asked me, where did I meet this person? And he could walk off saying, I met them on Thursday. So that's how he created his app and then subsequently his brand. They've got some fantastic witty banter that it'd be great if you wanted to follow just to see the types of things that they're doing and also some great guerrilla marketing. So pop in the chat if you've actually seen them and um, it'd be great to know that they're reaching their target audience. It's stuck. There we go. So we are hardwired for stories. There's lots of science here um, and apparently when we hear or read stories and they describe emotions, feelings, colours or smell, this activates the exact same part of our brain that they would, they would experience this in real life. Stories also release something called oxytocin, which is a feel good chemical that enables you to empathise, so put yourself in the shoes of other people and to feel connected to a story, a brand or a product. They also help us to transfer knowledge and to remember things. So, why tell stories at interview? So this guy here is Neil Bearden, and he introduced me to the concept of storytelling interview when I was working at my previous employer. Um, he told me about this story called The Bicycle Guy, and it's brilliant. I hope that I'm going to do it justice, but I've popped his little Vimeo um, link there if you wanted to have a look at it later on. It goes something like this. Two candidates go for interview at Goldman Sachs for a really, really big job in equity. First candidate goes in and the interviewer says to them, OK, why are you the best candidate for this role? And they say, I've done a fantastic internship here at uh, Goldman Sachs recently. Speak to my manager. I'm sure you get some really good feedback. Um, just finishing up at MIT, um, great at quantitative analysis, 
and I'm a finance guy. I love the numbers. OK, great response, right? So they finish up their interview and the next candidate goes in. They ask the same question and the candidate sits there and says, OK, so just finishing up at MIT, did a really great internship at Goldman Sachs, just finished up recently. Um, really great at quantitative analysis and I'm a finance guy. I love numbers. But every time I go for interviews, especially big interviews like this, I get a bit nervous and the best person to speak to is my dad. So I gave him a call last night and I said, Dad, I'm going for this interview at Goldman Sachs. Super nervous. It's going to be an equity. Any advice? And my dad says, OK, well, first of all, what's equity? So I explained to him and he says, simple, bicycles, turn on bicycles. So I kind of scratch my head a little bit and I say, Dad, OK, you're going to have to explain that to me. So my dad then says to me, bicycles, you know, do you not remember as a kid, you were the only 12 year old who had a hundred dollars in his back pocket regularly, he used to go out into the street and find all those thrown, uh, thrown away bicycles and you clean them up with your little toothbrush and you'd paint them and you put WD-40 on them and you'd sell them back to your friends for a hundred bucks. You were the only kid that did that. You've been doing it since you were 12 year old and that's equity, right? So, of course, the candidate tells this story. And who do you think is the most memorable candidate from those two? Who would you trust with being able to go and sell to um, new clients? Finance guy or the bicycle guy? I absolutely love that story. And that's when I started connecting with Neil and finding out more about what he likes to do, which is tell great stories. So feel free to follow him. He's one of my top picks. Now look now at the shortest story ever told. And it's this. For sale, baby shoes, never worn. It's attributed to Ernest Hemingway and it's just six words long. What do you think or feel when you read this story or hear this story? Feel free to pop a message in the chat. For me, when I heard this story, I immediately catastrophized in my head. I thought the worst. I thought, oh my goodness, no, you know, perhaps the baby's passed away and they've, they've had to sell these shoes so they don't think about it too much. And why would we do that? Well, actually it's all to do with a storytelling loop. Our brain is wired. To think Hello, logically. sorry, I'm joining late. No problem. Our brain I'm using is- using my phone, sorry. If you can mute yourself, thank you. Thank you, sorry. Yep, our brain is wired to think logically. We like a story loop, so we like a beginning, a middle and an end. And this six word story doesn't give us that. So we immediately jump to the wrong conclusion or, or we catastrophize. Why don't we think, well, maybe the baby was so healthy that they completely outgrew those shoes. Or maybe a family member bought exactly the same pair and they don't need them, so they're selling them. It's quite interesting how we do that, isn't it? So let's have a look at how we can close that story loop. So this is the ABT storytelling method and but and therefore it's used a lot in marketing, but you can also, of course, use it for interviews. It's a way of closing that story loop and giving us the beginning, the middle and the end to help your listener understand where your story is going. It's very concise and informative and it gives the audience a call to action or a CTA. So if we look at ABT interviewing for a motivational response, that's a question like this. So why did you apply for this role or why did you apply for this organisation? Then we can give this type of example. As a woman, statistics show that I'm unlikely to apply for a role unless I meet 90% of the criteria. And I'm pleased to say that for me, this role falls within that statistic. I've carefully reviewed essential and desirable skills, and I'm confident that I can demonstrate my fit for the role through past experience. But I also like to take pride in improving myself, and I'm happiest when I challenge myself stepping out of my comfort zone. Therefore, 
I'm knowing that I'm a great fit and this organisation actively promotes continuous professional development and is an investor in people means that I will be able to thrive in this role and reach my potential. So we've got and, but, and therefore. Now, normally I would come to you and say, OK, we need to focus on the STAIR technique. So situation, task, action, result, evaluate to respond to motivational competency based questions. And I 100% stand by this. This is another way to support you when you're interviewing to create something that helps tell that story and close that story loop. So if we give a couple of examples now on competency based questions, you can see the same type of pattern here. So tell me about a time when you've been faced with a difficult situation. What was the situation? What was the outcome? And what might you do differently in future? Here's my response. I worked as a graduate recruiter for KPMG. My role involved asking senior partners for their availability months in advance to interview at assessment centres. And often the partners would, can would cancel last minute due to client commitments. Interviewing candidates was important, but clients always came first. Therefore, I crafted a plan B and developed a body system buddying partners up to ensure my assessment centres were always covered. If I was faced with a similar situation again, I would ask the pitfalls of the task and tackle the problem sooner. So there we have, and, but, and therefore. Here's another example. This focuses on resilience, and you might be asked this question quite a lot going into interviews at the moment because of what's happened around the pandemic. So this is a good one to think about in terms of your stories. Tell me about a time where you have shown resilience. What was the situation and what did you learn about yourself? In October last year, I was made redundant and it was a really difficult time. The labour market was shrinking. I had bills to pay and my family relied on me. I went through what you could consider as the grieving process, denial, anger, etc. But I didn't lose sight of who I was and what I could offer. My LinkedIn connections remembered me and offered me six months premium membership to help find a job. I networked hard and completed online training and freelanced while I was job hunting. Therefore, when it came to interviewing, I had a much more positive story to tell, one of self-awareness and resilience, and I secured a full-time role in just under three months. I learned that I have so much more to offer than I've previously known and that I'm much stronger than I ever gave myself credit for. So you've got your and, but, and therefore. All of these things that I've added in this session today, this is me, these are my stories. So hopefully you can see that actually it's okay to offer a little bit of vulnerability. That's really good for stories but always make sure you close that story loop and bring that round to a call to action. So by the end of that conversation, the call to action is hire me. So if you'd like to know a little bit more about ABT and storytelling, this is the guy I learned my stuff from. His name is Park Howell and he's got a fantastic podcast. I popped the link on this session for you in the um, slides. So feel free in your lunchtime maybe to go along and have a listen to some of his really, really fantastic podcasts and the great guests that he has come on board. So now we've covered ABT, we've looked a little bit of storytelling and how we can potentially cover that interview. I want to give you some of my top picks for storytelling genius to really help inspire you and think about some of your stories that you can now tell at interview. Here's three of the best. This guy, I absolutely fangirl over this guy. He knows it, I know it. Um, and I followed his career right from the very beginning when he first started out. His name is David J.P. Phillips. And he started by writing a book called How to Avoid Death by PowerPoint. So how many, how many lectures have you been to where you have literally fallen asleep because there's way too many slides or they're really boring and well, hopefully you're not falling asleep now. That's um, that's another thing. Um, he created something that really helped people to understand that actually the slides, they don't matter. It's 
it's how you present the information, it's how you engage with the audience. So he started out by doing that. And then he's created something where he spent, I think it was seven years researching thousands and thousands of different presenters. And he came up with 110 techniques for communication and public speaking. So this is this kind of periodic table looking thing you can see there. And he's created his own university where you can go online and learn all about how to effectively present and own the stage if you're ever presenting. He talks about techniques like the pause. So hopefully I kept you on your seat there just because you were waiting for me to say something. Tilting your head to the side to show that you're listening and you have empathy. Open body language that's inclusive of, inclusive of your audience. Eye contact, of course, and there's lots of others that you can think of as well, They're all covered in this here. So you can pick out the ones that you want to focus on and he runs courses to help you with that. He's just broken onto TikTok. I follow him on there. And again, he's fantastic on there. And he's also based heavily in psychology. And um, so he helps with life hacks too. Another guy I absolutely think is wonderful. This is David Pullen. He has a company called The Story Spotters and he basically does go out and do that. He spots stories and weaves them into conversations to help businesses be able to pitch for new business um, and really reach their audiences effectively. He has regular video tips, podcasts, and some amazing words of wisdom. And he also was in the theater for many years. So he has the voice of molasses. He is absolutely brilliant. Last guy I'd like to draw your attention to is Francisco Mafus. So again, another guy that's really introduced me to the art of storytelling interview. And this conversation that you see here, you've got Ben White, who's actually um, an international recruiter, really focuses on the importance of this and how much he's seeing this now in interviewing, where people are starting to tell their story more. They're less afraid of showing a little bit of vulnerability and showing that they're more when they turn up to work than just the professional. They're also the parent or the family member or the carer or, you know, part time freelancer, whatever it is that you bring to work. All those multiple facets of your personality are what make you unique. And you have to remember that a recruiter isn't hiring a robot. They want you because you can bring all of these amazing different things to the workplace. And that's what makes it a great place to work. So he's given me some fantastic um, tips and tools um, that I can share with Dan and you can potentially get hold of those. You can also have a look at the YouTube video, which focuses very much on what we're talking about now, this whole storytelling technique and finding your stories to be able to promote those when you go for interviews. Um, so I definitely recommend those as a watch. Last little bit I really kind of wanted to talk to you guys about is um, storytelling on TikTok. Um, I've been doing some research recently on Gen Z and apparently you guys don't really focus on TikTok. It's all WhatsApp and Instagram and Pinterest, YouTube, but not so much TikTok. And I found that quite interesting. I would have thought that TikTok would be something you would really be engaging with. Um, so again, feel free to pop a message in the chat if it's something you agree or disagree with. Um, but storytelling for me is really coming about on TikTok. I'm seeing this happening more, even in terms of big, big organizations that you never would have thought would be have anything to do with this platform. Hilton, for example, they've just uh, released a new campaign around young people and why they would want to go to the Hilton, what they would like to experience and how they would like to do things. Obviously, you've got this um, infinite scrolling thing. And what's actually happening is that lots of people are doing accidental learning. So they're going onto this platform, maybe looking for, I don't know, I've got five minutes, I'm waiting in a queue for something, let's see what's on there. And it will show you obviously content that it thinks you will like using the algorithm, but you can also sign up for those um, hashtags as well. Um, and the, the stories on there are fantastic. So there's lots and lots of people who are currently searching for things. I mean, millions of people searching for life hacks and career skills hacks and those types of things, interviewing and jobs. So this is what I tend to do. This is the next step for me in terms of my storytelling. 
I'm going to have a go at this. I'm setting myself up with an account and I'm doing a little course on how I can go about tell stories on TikTok. So my aim is to post content for Gen Z that will demystify the workplace. So all those things that I've learned over my many, many years in the workplace, I plan to create some content that's going to help break that down for you guys. So anybody who's entry and entering into the world of work for the first time doesn't know how to ask questions and is afraid of certain things or you know what do I turn up to work wearing little things like that that's the type of thing that I plan to do looking at providing some life skill hacks so focusing on decision making skills um something around uh, applying for roles and and how you go about doing that providing tips on interviewing like this and linking everything together to help you to do that. And also really helping you to find your stories and talk about them confidently when you go to interview. At the moment, we don't have anything to say on there. There's nothing to say on there for me at all because I haven't created anything. I've just started using the platform, but my plan is very much to start building that content up. So if you did want to start following, um, that's going to be my, I think they call it a TikTok handle. Um, but definitely, it's a place where you can find some really, really great storytelling techniques and hacks, including David J.P. Phillips. So I definitely recommend it if you hadn't considered it before. We're at 20 minutes. I've got plenty of time for some questions. I've obviously talked quicker than I normally would. So thanks for listening. If anybody has any questions or they'd like to ask about what's happening in um, the world of storytelling, please feel free to close this down now. Jess, that was brilliant. Not only are you a great mentor on our platform, but a, a wonderful presenter. So thank you. If everyone wants to turn their audio on for a minute and give uh, Jess um, a round of applause. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Um, we've got the opportunity for uh, some questions. Use the chat uh, box and I'll, I'll go through those in a second. Um, but this is a, a simple technique, but extremely powerful um, for students and graduates to, to really stand out at interview. So thank you for introducing us to this technique and also uh, giving us um, some uh, three people there that we can follow. Uh, for for other advice. I mean, there's lots of uh, people out there, so we do appreciate you kind of narrowing it down to, to those three individuals for our for our listeners today. Um, we had uh, one question earlier when you referred to your um, slide um, with 110 elements in there. I think that was uh, David Phillips, was it? Yes, David J.P. Phillips. David J.P. Phillips, yeah. Um, that's a, a lot of elements. Yeah. Um, is there, a, does he have a, a website that you can go on, presumably, and you can deep dive and have a look at those different elements and see what, what that's all about? Absolutely. Yep. So um, he set up his own university where he covers off these courses. I was cheeky because I've been following him for a while. I said, oh, could you send me the, the diagram so I can have a look at this a bit more and understand it? And he has. So if you guys wanted it, I could always share that with you as well so you can see it. But yeah, it is incredible. That actually, it, the research that he's shown is that the effective presenters that he's sort of seen have these 100 different techniques. And some of them don't use them all the time, all in one go. But, um, you know, we're talking about things like the calls, which I love. And also this one. So you'll see this a lot on TikTok now where you get somebody who says to you, OK, I'm going to tell you three things. Number one it's this and so on and so on. So it's all about using your body language and connecting with other people. I find it absolutely fascinating. Yeah, yeah, it's um, very, very, very powerful. Um, and such a very, you know, simple method to get in the habit of using. And, you know, if you can have mock interviews with a friend or a parent or someone in your career service, you'll get more and more confident and you'll really nail this technique which will open yeah. up so many more doors for you. And, and also when you're in the workplace, you're going to have to present um, from time to time and you know go into meetings. So it's a really useful life skill um, 
uh, that you've introduced here. So uh, we've got a couple of other questions that have come through. One from Anna. Thank you, Anna. Um, she has asked, uh, do you have tips on how we engage with techniques, making our stories sound as natural as possible? Um, yeah. I guess it might come over as quite rehearsed if you're not careful. So that's a really good question. How, how do you look like you've just thought of that answer where you know, you've been busy preparing for it? That, that is a really, really good question. Thank you very much for that, Anna. So um, I completely, I, I rehearse and over rehearse, but when I go along to an interview, it's this, it's, it's you, your personality that comes across, your body language. So you're only going to come across as over rehearsed if you're like this and you are a robot and you it's like you're reading it off something in front of you. So it's your charisma, it's the way you use your hands, it's your eye contact, tilting your head to the side, all those types of things that can make it seem much more natural. Take some breaths, take some pauses, take a chance to sort of maybe sit back in your seat and think a little bit about it. An interviewer knows that you'll rehearse. It happens, you know, well, you should be practicing before you go to interview. This is a big deal, it's your job. Um, but if you're showing your body language and that you're not that robot, that's gonna help really show that you are, you know, giving something that's natural, that's really important to you to share is your story. Lovely, yeah, that, that's true. Um, getting yourself across and not sounding like, like a robot. And you, you know, you can practice that. Um, and the more you do, the more confident you'll be. And you'll probably be able to think of other um, answers to questions that maybe you haven't rehearsed that um, are even better on the day. Um, so that's great. Thank you very much. Um, right, I know we're out of time. These are, these are very short uh, workshops just designed to give our mentees an introduction to uh, ways they can uh, make themselves more employable. So if you do want any uh, further information, I'm sure Jess um, we'll be uh, able to share more insights with you. I'm sure you're on LinkedIn. Um, I know you're very active on there. Um, <laughs> so certainly find Jess on there. And she's also on our platform uh, offering mentoring uh, sessions. So thank you once again uh, for coming along and um, uh, presenting your ABT technique. That's wonderful. You're really welcome. I really enjoyed it. And thanks very much for everyone and for engaging and asking those really great questions. Awesome. Uh, I've just finished off with details of our uh, next event. Um, yeah. This will be in the new year. So we've actually got Ernst & Young or EY um, with several of their team volunteering for a whole week running workshops on applying for roles in the financial services industry. So if that's a sector you're interested in, save the date 17th to the 21st of January uh, 2022 uh, will be our next workshop. Uh, you'll all receive alerts uh, and we'll be updating the platform very, very soon. So thank you for attending. Thank you for um, your questions and we will see you next time.